uh, I trained at Fernie Hills Pool in Brisbane and um, it's very similar to this pool. So this is where I first started swimming for triathlon after watching a, an aquathlon at, at Glenelg Beach and um, yeah, I did quite a lot of training in this pool so it means a lot to me and it was great to come back today and have a, a quite a long set, probably longer than I ever swam in, in the early days. My first tri coach, other than us swimming in these two lanes just here, used to get some of the girls to swim in this kids pool over here to ensure that they're uh, getting high elbows in the water. It was pretty funny to watch them <laughs> sort of scraping along the bottom. Um, Quick Adelaide tour here, we've just got a church. It's known as the City of Churches, but I'd prefer it to be the, the, uh, the wine state. Um, and then, yeah, it's got Adelaide, Adelaide Oval here, known for cricket. Um, it's a very pretty city, so it's great to be able to show everyone where I came from. This is Adelaide Oval where uh, football's played in South Australia, but I go for the Geelong Cats. Go Cats! <laughs> That's why I do triathlon, not football. <laughs> That's a new bridge. They ran the duathlon world championships over that bridge. I was Australian champion, and then I did shit at the world. I did something stupid. I tried to do an. I, I did. So I did really well at the Australian championship, and then, which was on the test course, and then I did the world championship, but I sucked because oh, I was coaching. You no, know, yeah. Well, I did an Ironman, and then I did the duathlon worlds, and then I did it like a. I did Ballarat, and I had to pull out. It was just all over the place. It was part of the decision to go find a professional coach, actually, to to actually step it up and go full time. So, um, yeah, it was like a big change after that because it kind of recognised that I needed something more, and I wasn't able to just choose random events because you don't. It's not really good. You need a bit more focus so that we can always have a coffee, <laughs> another coffee. I don't know what we do without coffee. I think it's. Uh, I think it's really important. <laughs> so this year I've decided to do some videos for social media because um, I don't feel people know me well enough. I've been around now for a few years at, at the world sort of level, but I haven't really been, I've been quite private. So. Um, these videos are pretty much to show a little bit more about me, maybe impart some tips and yeah, also just to have a bit of fun and you know, hopefully you like it. So we're here in Adelaide, my uh, very original hometown um, and we're actually at Glenelg Beach which is where I very first started triathlon uh, 10 to 15 years ago. Um, I learnt pretty much my trade here and I've come back because I think it's the best way to explain my life story in, and my journey in triathlon. Um, and, a little, and it really gives you a, a more of an understanding of, of the grassroots of where I've come from in, in tries. So um, yeah, it's been really exciting. The Tour Down Under is on at the moment as well. So there's a lot of people out having fun, enjoying riding and enjoying the city of Adelaide. They're ready to go, David. Really something short. Before we get under. <laughs> I can't even take it off, I'm so tired. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes it doesn't matter how fit you think you are. The, uh, the Adelaide Hills can be certainly hum humbling, for sure. Is, um, not often I call for the sag. <laughs> but when, uh, when you get 2,000 metres of climbing in three hours, <laughs> After two weeks back into training, it sort of uh, can be a bit brutal. There was some a lot of ex pro tour riders and a stack of um, very accomplished riders. So yeah, it was uh, it's quite challenging for me, especially as the um, the only one on a spaceship time trial bike. We got led around by Tiffany Cromwell, one of the girls from Team Rafa Tram, Canyon Tram, and she she was doing a training hill rep ride. So we sort of saw a few new a few new hills today. I mean, different rides, different roads. So. 
it was good good my legs aren't good but i'm good <laughs> oh it's so hot <laughs> i'm just wrecked <laughs> i can never cry now <laughs> i'm already crying you can't see it underneath these sunnies they're so big but i've never seen so many people just cruising around the adelaide hills if you haven't experienced it, you wouldn't really appreciate how good it is because you can actually sort of live in a really nice sort of hotel area in the city and stuff but if you go riding you can within 20 minutes you're in the hills so it's not hard to then unlike myself today where I just kept pushing on but you can actually go back very easily so I think that's the appeal whereas other tours around the world it's very challenging logistically even to to experience the race I didn't even have a coffee uh, I had one bottle. Oh, what was I thinking? It's so hot. Oh. So I started triathlon about 10 to 15 years ago after watching an aquathon uh, on this beach right here behind me. Um, it was really popular. There was quite a few people watching and it seemed really exciting to me and I really enjoyed um, the environment. So I signed up for a club the next day that's part of um, the Triathlon South Australia um, Association. and. Um, it pretty much started as, you know, two to three sessions a day almost right from the start. The club was really organized and we had a lot of um, good training programs. So, um, yeah, but initially I just started as an age group athlete and uh, enjoyed racing on the weekends and having fun with friends before I sort of got quite fit and realized that I could perhaps try and race elite at the elite level. Um, and in about 2007, I raced the Noosa Triathlon as an open athlete and won the open age category. And after that, I decided to move up to Queensland to train with the Queensland Academy of Sport. And from there, I uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to have the experience to travel the world racing ITU. Um, unfortunately for me at the time, my swim wasn't very good. Um, it's improved it since, um, and and you know that's the next step in my journey. I had traveled. Um, quite a bit with ITU and then I went back to work um, after having a bit of a hip injury so I tried to balance work and life uh, during that period of time in between say 2010 and 2013 2014 and at the end of 15 I decided that I might give long course tries a, uh, a little bit more of a shot and I met my current coach Cam Watt and um, yeah it's been amazing since then so um, yeah it's been a long journey I didn't actually do an Ironman for probably 10 years. Um, my first Ironman was Cairns Ironman in 2015. I really love the uh, the challenge of the triathlon training. I think um, racing is always celebrating your training, but um, some sometimes the most um, enjoyment I get out of is just achieving some of the sessions that we have and completing some of the sessions that we have to do. It's um, I know I have an amazing opportunity to, to race uh, overseas and everything else, and it is fun to travel, but some days it's, it's literally just getting through a training session that can be the most enjoyable part. So you'll see me travel overseas this year. I'll head to Switzerland and to America, which I do each year. It's pretty fun. I get, a, I get to have an amazing life. Um, but also, yeah, like, I mean, I've got a race schedule. It's pretty, it's pretty raw at the moment. It's not, it's not totally fleshed out, but um, yeah, you'll see me traveling from Outback Australia to the, to Switzerland to Europe to Germany where I've learnt to sprechen Sie Deutsch uh, and then over back over to America where I train in preparation for Kona which is my key race of the year. Um, for me Kona has become something that it means a lot to me now and I think it's like one of the crowning races of the year and if you can achieve at Kona it's it's a big it's a big thing for your success. To me it's it's part of my success in the sport is to have my best performance. Uh, at the Hawaiian Ironman. Um, I often have great performances in races where people don't even know that I'm happy with the performance, but it'd be amazing to be able to marry those two together and have my best day at the most important and most uh, coveted race of the year. This year we'll see if I can get things right and, and head in the right direction for, for Kona. And, and um, yeah, it should be fun. I, hopefully everything goes to plan. So if there's anything you want to know about uh, my travels, my my background, um, triathlon in general, um, we're going to cover quite a lot of topics this year and we're going to get a little bit deep on a few things that um, people might be interested in knowing about, um, which maybe get sugar-coated 
from time to time. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna get stuck into those issues. But if there's anything else that you want to hear about, just just hit me up. Um, happy to answer them in these videos. And and um, that's really what it's for. It's here to it's here to explain my life to you. So yeah, shoot me questions. I want I want to answer them. <laughs> it's brutal. This truck is just killing me up here. If you can hear a truck in the background, it's a dude just cutting sick laps on the sand. There's like people working everywhere here. We've got a little truck going, we've got a plane. There's a lot of people going past. There's also a little dude on a little machine and a blow of that guy. It's like crazy. <laughs>